lap the lamps mm -hmm. and, and uh, well yeah it's a very oh, rich yeah. and diverse history and russia mm -hmm. Welcome to Behind the Pages. Bruce McBain is back with us today to talk about the Ice Queen. Bruce is a historian, and he's written several other books of historical fiction and historical mysteries. This book is the second in a series centered around an Icelandic man who travels to Russia and finds himself caught um, between a power struggle between two very strong political enemies. He needs to choose sides, but doesn't really want to. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you, Diane. It's good to be here again. I always enjoy talking with you. I do, too. Um, so tell us about your main character, Odd, and the book, uh, just a little bit of a summary of the book. Sure. Um, the hero is Odd Tangle here. That's mm -hmm. O-D-D, -D, mm -hmm. which actually is an Icelandic man's name. Right, not because he's bizarre. Uh, not because, <laughs> but he is a little odd, yeah. uh, which is why I like the name. But it uh -huh. is actually an, uh, it is a name. Mm -hmm. And the um, story takes place in uh, Iceland in the 11th, early 11th century, mm -hmm. at a time when the country has converted to Christianity. Mm -hmm. But Odd's family are pagan. Mm -hmm. His father, Black Thorvald, uh, has become a rather morose, solitary, um, half mad character, mm -hmm. um, uh, um, cut off from all of his uh, former contacts. Um, they live on a farm under the uh, volcano Mount Hecla. Mm -hmm. Odd uh, has a very difficult relationship with his father, but is loyal to the idea of paganism mm -hmm. and and uh, devotee of of um, the god Odin, the king of the gods. Mm -hmm. um, and in the first novel, in Odin's Child, um, there is a feud with another family as a result of which Odd's family is wiped out, their house is burned, Odd flees with a, a ragtag crew of a few people in a stolen ship and then embarks on a long series of adventures that take him all over the northern world. And um, I don't want to go into all of that in mm -hmm. detail, but at the end of that book, um, he is at the borders of Russia. Mm -hmm. And here he meets young Prince Harold, uh, a Norwegian princeling fleeing from his country mm -hmm. and on his way to Russia to seek help um, from the Prince of Novgorod. Mm -hmm. uh, Harold, they're both about the same age. They're both, we would call, teenagers, mm -hmm. except um, you know, by Icelandic sta uh, standards, they're yeah. already young adults. They're yeah. men. Mm -hmm. um, Harold is, is, has a violent temper, is arrogant, uh, is, is ambitious, and odd, for better or worse, signs on as his scald. Mm -hmm. A scald is a combination of court poet, confidant, advisor, ambassador, mm -hmm. anyhow, he decides that he will go with Harold to Russia. Mm -hmm. And there, as you said in your introduction, uh, we are introduced to the court at Novgorod, uh, kind of doddering old Prince Yaroslav and his, his um, beautiful, ambitious, cunning, ruthless wife, Princess Ingigerd. Mm -hmm. And Ingigerd, for complex reasons, hates Harold and is mm -hmm. determined to destroy him. And she does this by seducing Odd and mm -hmm. making him fall in love with her. And Odd is now walking a tightrope yeah. between these two dangerous person, people, either one of whom might destroy him mm -hmm. if they find out that his allegiance has shifted to the other, to the other side. Um, that's, the, mm -hmm. that's the premise of, right. the, of the book. Okay. Um, so the, the book, this book actually opens with a prologue in which uh, Odd is an, an old man and he's back in Iceland mm -hmm. and, and a young scribe has been assigned the task of, mm -hmm. of writing down the right. history you know, of his life. As it, as it begins, the scribe is not very complimentary of, right. of Odd. Right. It doesn't seem to like him. Well, why not? What, okay. is his, what are his initial impressions? Right. This is actually my favorite idea in the book. Uh -huh. the, the framing narrative mm -hmm. of prologue and epilogue. Yeah. Uh, that that, that uh, bookend uh, each of the novels. And uh, this young man is Tate the Deacon, mm -hmm. uh, the son of the bishop 
of Iceland and a mm -hmm. firm Christian, and a young man of about the age that Odd was when his adventures began, mm -hmm. 16, 17, something like that. Yeah. And his father, the bishop, has sent him to take down Odd's story, not because they're interested in Odd, but because by this time Harold has mm -hmm. become the famous king of Norway and they mm -hmm. want to collect anecdotes. But Odd insists, before I tell you anything about Harold, I will tell you my saga, mm -hmm. my story. Takes him a long time to even get around to Harold. Yeah. And Tate hates this. Mm -hmm. He thinks that Odd is a crazy old man, mm -hmm. a heathen. Uh, he doesn't want his innocent ears to be exposed mm -hmm. um, to this lechery and, 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 and uh, heresy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he's fighting this. He doesn't want to be there. And at the first opportunity, he escapes. Mm -hmm. However, and we don't know this until we get to the end of the first novel. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we realize that this odd, this charming, interesting young character is mm -hmm. now a decrepit old man mm -hmm. back in Iceland, living in poverty in the ruins of his hall, mm -hmm. and we don't know why. Right. And Tate doesn't find out why. Mm -hmm. And even in the second novel, we don't find out why. Right. And you will have to wait to the end of the third novel, which is coming out later this year, okay. to finally find out what happened okay. to Odd and what proceeds from there, where mm -hmm. the, the framing plot and the main plot come mm -hmm. together. From. Mm -hmm. Well, so the scribe des describes Odd as a man with kind of a quick temper but a very keen wit. Mm -hmm. Would Odd agree with that? Yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. I think um, Odd is always the first one to admit that his temper gets the best of him. Mm -hmm. um, but he has a good heart. Yeah. Um, and he regrets these outbursts, and mm -hmm. he re regrets that sometimes there's no stepping back. Yeah. When he, at the end of the first novel, has his argument with his mentor, Stig, mm -hmm. and realizes we can't go back from there, you mm -hmm. know? And when he finally says goodbye to his crew, he says, one of us will have to leave, and I'm going to be the one to leave. Mm -hmm. I'm going on. and. Here is the money that I was paid as a bribe. Uh, I'm giving it to you to refit the ship, and I think you should make Stig the captain. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. farewell. Goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. So he's aware of his. Yeah, he is. He's very self aware. Yeah. He's very self aware. I, in fact, his father was a very moody and basically depressed man, as mm -hmm. you started to say um, yeah. before. W would you say that Odd is anything like his father? Yes. And in fact, he dreads mm -hmm. the fact that he's like his father. And when we see him finally as an old man, mm -hmm. living, he's basically become his father, mm -hmm. uh, which is maybe not such a rare fear mm -hmm. that if we live long enough, we become our parents. Yeah, <laughs> right, I mean? right. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and, and that is, has always been Odd's fear, that there okay. is this worm mm -hmm. of cowardice, as mm -hmm. he defines it, of madness, mm -hmm. uh, which he has inherited along with the, the unruly black hair yeah. from his father. Mm -hmm. And right from the very beginning of the novel, we sense that this troubles him. Mm -hmm. in, in fact, I would say a lot of his youth was spent being deliberately being opposite of his father, um, where his father would counsel, don't just let it go, mm -hmm. let it go, even when you're provoked. Uh, Odd doesn't. He right. he then uses he his must temper. Test himself. Right. That's Each why time. when he goes to the horse fight, which mm -hmm. is the scene that opened that, uh, that opens the first novel, right. um, he puts himself forward and says, "I have brought my horse here, and I give my challenge." Mm -hmm. And his older brother Gunner tries to talk him out of it, but he says, yeah. "No. If I if if I don't do it now, yes. then I'm my father." Right. And he doesn't want yeah. that. I, I mean, there are times in the story too where his temper works for him. Um, you know, he takes a risk mm. and it actually does work too, mm. but there are many times when it mm. doesn't. Um, yeah. It yeah. just doesn't seem like he wants to be able to learn to control the temper, at least as a young man, because I think for the him then too, that would make him feel too much like his father. Yeah, well, his, his relationship with Thorvald is a ambiguous mm -hmm. at the least. He 
both loves and hates him. Yes. To him, he owes his knowledge of poetry, his gift with words, mm -hmm. but at the same time, he hates what his father has become. Yes. So it's a very complex relationship. Mm -hmm. So as Odd's story begins, he's just recovering from a fever that almost killed him. Mm -hmm. And he is at, um, he, he's told that his man, Einar, has not yeah. left his side throughout the whole yeah, illness. Wonderful yeah, wonderful yeah. yeah. He said, well, this isn't my servant. You know, so, so who is Einar? Einar is, um, well, if we were going to use the analogy of the Old West, mm -hmm. Einar is the last Indian fighter, uh -huh. the last gunslinger. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a holdover from an earlier generation. He's a Yom's Viking, and what little we know about the Yom's Vikings is this was a military caste mm -hmm. of Viking warriors um, who had a fortress on the Baltic Sea. Mm -hmm. And Einar, who's got only one eye, mm -hmm. missing a hand, missing a leg, old but tough as leather yeah and Einar sticks with him mm -hmm. and and they bond mm -hmm. I mean it's it's odd who persuades his crew to take Einar on mm -hmm. uh, and let him join them uh, and the cr other crew never warm up to Einar mm -hmm. but he and Odd are are, are are very close and and Einar almost becomes a kind of father mm -hmm. to Odd. And, yes. and does stay with them while Odd is ill, and then they go together to uh, to Novgorod. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean those are the times when you see Odd's kindness, you know. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. His loyalty. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, so you know, it's it's clear that Odd isn't just out to make a fortune for himself. No, he really does no, uh, watch Odd, out for Odd's this. goal. Mm -hmm. um, is to become rich and powerful enough to mm -hmm. someday go back to Iceland mm -hmm. and settle scores with the people who's the family who slaughtered his mm -hmm. his family and mm -hmm. with the powerful Christian chieftain Snorri. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, the sad thing is that we see at the end that Odd has come back, but mm -hmm. he hasn't done any of those things. I know. Yeah. Although. Yeah, um, but we don't. We, we will find out. But okay. But I'm not going to give it away because that would take the fun away. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> we have to read the book right. and find out. Yeah. Um, Odd is at a man's house named uh, Ragnavald. I think I'm mm. so hopefully saying that right. Well, it's it's clear that Odd doesn't like or trust this man. So how did he come to be in his house? Well, Ragnavald is the what is it now? Is the cousin mm -hmm. of Ingigerd. Okay. They're Swedish. Uh huh. She's actually Swedish. And, and, and it's a real character, although I've given him a personality. We don't really know much about him. But mm -hmm. he was her cousin. And when she went to Russia to become the consort of old Prince Yaroslav, mm -hmm. she set him up as the governor of this town of Aldegyaborg, which is really on the border of, uh, on Lake Ladoga, actually. Mm -hmm. on the frontier of Russia, mm -hmm. and you have to call upon him. You have to pass through his hall okay. if you're going to go on any farther. Ah, okay. so that's why Harold is there mm -hmm. with his small entourage, mm -hmm. and Odd winds up there, um, and, and um, it's Ragnvald who offers Odd a bribe mm -hmm. to betray Harold. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that last scene in Odin's Child, Odd takes almost all of the gold mm -hmm. and gives it to his crew. Mm -hmm. it says, everybody thinks they own me and nobody yeah. owns me. Uh huh. Yeah. So his first task once he's recovered is to bring some books and goods to Yaroslav mm -hmm. um, in, in, uh, in the city called, of... Who was called Yaroslav the Wise. Oh, Russian okay. Marcos, and this is... Because he actually owned a few books. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Which was an astonishing thing. Mm -hmm. And not only owned them but wrote them. He and is known mm -hmm. for having created Russia's first law code, mm, the, interesting. the law code of Novgorod. He actually wrote it. Yes. Because uh, so he is a historical character. Yeah. A little bit is known about him. Mm -hmm. We know, for example, that he walked with a limp, mm -hmm. that he was not physically robust, that he was not your typical Rus warrior, mm -hmm. uh, that he was bookish. Mm -hmm. um, studious, mm -hmm. uh, and so I've created him in contrast to his wife Ingigerd, who is yeah. quite a bit younger than he is, and right. who is the the 
tough guy in the film. She, she definitely mm -hmm. is. And in fact, the first thing that Odd witnesses when he arrives at the hall is her disciplining the children. Right. Um, for being unruly. But her interactions with one of them is different. Can you tell us about that with well, Magnus? Well, with Magnus, let me, let me first okay. think about her daughter, Elizaveta, mm -hmm. who is also a historical character, mm -hmm. who Harold decides as soon as he gets there mm -hmm. that he's going to make her his wife someday. Mm -hmm. uh, she's probably at this time about 14, mm -hmm. and Harold is 16 going on 17. And of course, Ingegerd, this drives Ingegerd frantic. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and in fact, just to uh, an historical aside, this happened. Harold mm -hmm. did marry Elizabeth, mm -hmm. and she mm -hmm. went back eventually with him to Norway and became Queen of Norway. Mm -hmm. However, Magnus, however, is the illegitimate son of Harold's, this gets confusing, <laughs> I know, is Two the hands. illegitimate son of Harold's half-brother, Olaf. Mm -hmm. Saint Olaf, mm -hmm. King Olaf, King Olaf's college, Saint, King Olaf, Olaf's college is named after uh -huh. um, okay. uh, who brought Christianity to Norway, but mm -hmm. was then defeated and killed in battle, and that's why Harold fled. But Harold and Magnus, as he are bound to be enemies, mm -hmm. because Harold is the half brother, Magnus is the illegitimate son. There mm -hmm. is no real legitimate heir, so right. one of these two is going to wind up being King of Norway. Mm -hmm. Ingegerd is backing, is backing Magnus because Ingegerd, in fact, had been in love with Olaf mm -hmm. and, and, and just wants to, to, to champion Magnus, and that's why she hates Harold. I, mm -hmm. I know this is complex. You yeah. know, well, if you read it, it makes a bit more sense. Not only that, but you're very um, considerate in giving us a whole like, um, <laughs> family tree <laughs> so we can figure out who everybody is. I, so I, I like that I part. I had to keep going back here, right? <laughs> because the names are complicated oh, as well. Are, yeah. Are. And, and, yeah. And, and uh, to take pity on the reader, mm -hmm. there is um, a list of characters. Yes. There is uh, a genealogy of yes. the Norwegian royal family, mm -hmm. the Russian royal family. So if you yeah. pay attention, you can keep the, keep right. the players sorted out. Absolutely, yeah. But, um, but she does favor Magnus. Little Magnus. Yeah, yeah little Magnus. Um, is this because she's raising him? I mean, what? Because what? She's, uh, yeah. she's fostering. Mm -hmm. Olaf left Magnus as their, to Yaroslav and Ingegor as to, uh, to foster. Mm -hmm. When he went back to try to fight for his throne in mm -hmm. Norway and got killed yeah. at the Battle of Stiklestad. So she feels this this um, this, this need to, to mm -hmm. protect Magnus, and in, again, historical aside, Magnus did become king of Norway. Mm -hmm. Live for, he was known as Magnus the Good, mm -hmm. and eventually Harold kicked him out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looking <laughs> yeah. ahead a few years. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, and, and she's very tender and loving to him. Yeah. On the other hand, her interactions with her oldest daughter are not the same, no, are no, they? No, no they, yeah. they don't get along. They yeah. don't get along, and the fact that, that Harold is paying court to her, as I said, mm -hmm. drives her wild. Yeah. And uh, Elizabeth refuses to consider being betrothed to anybody else, which mm -hmm. is true. Yeah. And huh? they did eventually. Mm -hmm. Yes, because initially, as um, at least Odd meets her, she's she's betrothed to someone else. Yes, yeah, she's betrothed to Aelith, the son of Roggenwald. Mm -hmm. Okay, but but that doesn't uh, she has no interest in that, and Aelith says, "Well, we won't get into all the details." Mm -hmm. Right. And then at the same time, I want to just to shift the focus a little bit. Yeah. While all of this is going on, the wild Pechenig tribesmen mm -hmm. are invading southern Russia uh -huh. and besieging Kiev, and they all have to rush down there and rescue Kiev, mm -hmm. and it's thanks to a very clever stratagem of odds okay. that they succeed in re mm -hmm. relieving the, the siege and defeating the Pechenegs. and for a moment, mm -hmm. Odd is a hero, but this mm -hmm. will not last. I mean, mm -hmm. You will find that tide is turning against him. Yeah, he seems to have that kind of a life where he yeah, he's run sort of he at the crest of the wave and then drops down. Yeah, <laughs> you know, he, so, has, yeah. he has the worst luck in the world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a large Swedish population in Novgorod. Mm. How did this come to be? Um, we do happen to know that the princes of Novgorod, particularly mm -hmm. Yaroslav, 
uh, imported uh, a lot of Swedish mercenaries mm -hmm. because Ingegerd was Swedish. Uh -huh. She was the daughter of the Swedish king. Yeah. Um, and they imported a lot of Swedish mercenaries, so there and and we gather that there was a sizable number of them there. Um, who did not get along with the native population. They were kind mm -hmm. of a foreign, they had their own barracks, their own commander, mm -hmm. um, and so there's tension there. But, but there was a lot of back and forth mm -hmm. between, uh, it, it, it was remembered that Russia, that the, the land of the Rus at this mm -hmm. time, had deep roots in Norse culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the original Rus were Danes. Um, and there was constant back and forth of people coming from Scandinavia okay. um, either to make their fortune in Russia uh -huh. or to pass through Russia on their way to Constantinople. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's lots of Norwegians and Swedes all, all over the place. There. Okay, yeah. And the occasional Icelanders. Mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. We do happen to know this. Yeah. Um, Ingegerd summons Odd to um, have a to uh, to meet with her, and um, he he gives her back some of the gold that was paid mm -hmm. to him, and he says, "I just want you to know, I will not be your spy." Mm -hmm. uh, can you explain what that's all about? Well, um, Odd is determined to be his own man. Mm -hmm. Um, of the, the uh, what was it, I think 12 ounces of gold that mm -hmm. Roggenwald gave him. He gave 10 to his crew. Right, yes, And with the said. rest, he bought some new clothes. Mm -hmm. uh, and he goes, here, I'm yep. giving this back Take to the you. Rest. You're under the impression that your cousin Roggenwald has hired me mm -hmm. to spy on Harold. I'm not. Mm -hmm. right? As long as I'm Harold's man, I will be Harold's man. So here's the money back. That's and the kind of guy I do. Right. Know. And then she gives him one ounce back. Uh -huh. and says, um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of the line. She says, the money was given in a bad cause, mm -hmm. and I have no doubt that you spent it on a good cause. And here, this is bad. This is for you. And he takes it. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is the beginning of her winning him over. Yes. And pretty soon, mm -hmm. they're in bed together. Right. <laughs> but, and she's somebody who seems to be able to switch gears pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you can kind of see the wheel starting to turn. Okay, if I can't buy him, how else How else? How, how else, else can I get how, him on my how, side? Right, right. Yeah. I mean, she's old enough to be his mother, uh -huh. but she's still a, a very attractive woman. Mm -hmm. uh, and he finds he's fascinated by her. Yeah. She's somebody completely out of his experience. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he falls. He mm -hmm. succumbs. He loves her. Yeah, you know, and now what to do? Yes, see. and he can't really tell Harold what he he's can't doing. Tell Harold yeah. will go nuts because they're they're both enemies. Right. They're in a power struggle right. against right. each so other. Here he is, as Einar mm -hmm. says, "You are in a pit between two wolves." Yes, right. Einar is always trying to give odd advice, which Odd mostly doesn't take. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. As a reader, you're kind of, you know, encouraging yeah. him sometimes. So please listen yeah, here. Have a little <laughs> sense here, you know. Right. That, that's not odd. No, know. no, definitely not. Um, so you know, uh, Ingrid's husband and his bro uh, his brother were he j had just re are just returning from a battle or returned from a battle pretty soon mm -hmm. after Odd arrives. Uh, they both greet Ingrid, and her her response is pretty cold. Mm -hmm. Uh, what is her relationship with, like, you know, with her husband and his brother? Well, okay, as far as history, as far, okay, mm -hmm. as far as the Russian primary chronicle, which is mm -hmm. the Russian source where this goes, Ingegerd hardly exists. Her, mm -hmm. her name is just mentioned, and, and we don't learn anything much about her, because mm -hmm. the Russian primary chronicle is basically not interested in women. Mm -hmm. it, it tells us quite a bit about Yaroslav, and yeah. as I said, we gather that he was unmilitary, mm -hmm. bookish, um, a, a, a terribly nice man, yeah. um, but involved with his, you know. Mm -hmm. The Norse sources on Ingegerd mm -hmm. paint a very interesting picture. She is cunning. She is ruthless. Uh, she is headstrong. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's what I used. You yeah. know? And she has never loved Yaroslav. Mm -hmm. This is something her, her father forced her to do. Her heart has always been with Olaf, who's mm -hmm. dead now, yeah. say, but she's still carrying that torch. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't care much for Yaroslav, okay. and even less for Yaroslav's loud, burly, yeah. bumptious brother, Mstislav, mm -hmm. who she really doesn't like. Yeah. yeah. She doesn't really respect 
either brains or brawn, it seems like, because mm -hmm. of the two brothers, you know, her husband right. is, is right. very academic, right. although he does go to battle. Um, but he does. Yeah, he yeah. does, you know, uh, but, but he, he's never going to get any credit from, yeah. from, uh, from Ingeger. Right. Um, uh, yeah, and, and mm -hmm. um, I was about to make a point, and I lost it now. Oh, yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it seems like no matter what he did, she would not have respected right. Respected him because she never really chose him right. as a husband, right. which women right. of, of that and time didn't. Affair, you know, yeah. this uh, strange love affair with mm -hmm. Olaf, who she had only met briefly, mm -hmm. and who then promptly went off and got got himself killed. Yeah, this is true. I mean, this is yeah. like we know that he he courted her, he mm -hmm. wrote poems to her, he won her heart, although mm -hmm. they had barely ever seen each other. Yeah, and we gathered that for her, this never died. Mm -hmm. you know, this, mm -hmm. And this this is uh, this is authentic. Right. Well, of course, then it's it could a remain. Very curious situation, yeah. but this wow. is what happened. Mm -hmm. And of course, it could remain more of a fantasy since they mm. didn't ever really know each other very well. Right, and we don't yeah. really quite know what went on. In, mm -hmm. in Snorri's biography of King Olaf, who by that mm -hmm. time was saintly and you couldn't suggest anything improper <laughs> about him, Yeah, Snorri steers away from that. Whether, mm -hmm. Whatever Snorri might have known, he's not going to mm. tell us, you know, we don't really know whatever happened between the two of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Odd tells us about Harold's success, you know, in battle and uh, in in how he's really a very good leader, you mm -hmm. know, when it comes to mil military strategy. But he also says he could never be Harold's friend. Why is this? Because nobody can be Harold's friend. Mm -hmm. um, my at least version mm -hmm. of Harold, uh, and and we have a whole biography of him also by mm -hmm. Snorri Sturluson, who wrote all of these royal biographies mm -hmm. two centuries later. My sense of Harold, um, and which is odd understanding, yeah. is that Harold is so self-centered, mm -hmm. so self-consumed, and with such a chip on his shoulder, with mm. such a feeling of grudge because uh, he was the despised uh, half-brother, mm -hmm. you know, uh, he never got the respect that he thought he was entitled to. He did later on come to be called Harold the Ruthless, Harold mm -hmm. Hardrada. Yeah, um, um, and also because he was a giant, he mm -hmm. was huge. At the age of fifteen, he was well over six feet tall. Okay. Uh, the only other Russian who ever got to be that tall was Peter the Great, mm. <laughs> who, yeah. who, all, I, who I think has something in common with them. Yeah, and as Odd understands it, mm -hmm. um, Harold was because of his size called upon to be a man before he really was a man. Yeah. And he has always to be proving something. Yes. And it's impossible to ever be Harold's friend. Yeah. Really. And Odd realizes this pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. He will uh, serve yeah. him, because mm -hmm. he said he would. He right. took the oath, you know, mm -hmm. he took the arm, right? Right. But he says it, it, no one can ever be Harold's friend. Mm-hmm. Well, yes, and, and it's really not in Odd's nature to, you know, kind of, um, handle people, you know, it, which is basically the only way you could even have mm. give the illusion of friendship, I think, with Harold, is to be his handler um, as and opposed tries, to his friends. You know. Yeah. He tries, yeah. but he's not that good at it. No, but no. And, and, and the older counselor, Don, mm -hmm. Don mm -hmm. Rinson, yeah. who yeah. has come with Harold, who's older and he's mm -hmm. his mentor, and, and he's the one who appeals to, to us and join us. Yes. Become his skull. He yeah. likes you. And God knows I don't know how to control this young fellow right. anymore. You're more his age. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, you can advise him. Yes. And then Odd says, you know, I don't know anything about courts. What advice could I give him? Right. And Odd says, well, we would weigh the advice ahead of time, wouldn't <laughs> we? And Odd says, well, then it wouldn't exactly be my advice, would it? Right. You know? but he no, and he's very, he, yeah, yeah, and he's quite clear. Yeah. I, I do have to tell you, we are out of time. Oh God, and it happens, happens again. See, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it goes in very fast. You have been watching Behind the Pages from the staff of 22 City View. I'm Diane Goshkarian. And thank you. That really did fly by, didn't it? it? it yeah, does. It yeah. Does. It, it's great. Yeah.